Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, what is a cube? How do I play with a cube? And how do I build and maintain my own cube? Cube is widely considered to be one of the most fun ways to play Magic the Gathering, and after the initial investment you spend to build the cube, it can be played for free, anytime, anywhere, forever. As such, Cube is the quintessential casual limited format, but while designing and building your own cube is an exciting, rewarding process, many Magic the Gathering players don't know where to begin or even what precisely a cube is. This video will cover everything you need to know to play with, maintain, and improve your own cube. This is an updated comprehensive guide to a series of videos I released a whopping eight years ago with new information based on how cube has evolved. I will also cover some additional resources that you can seek out if you find the topic of Cube exciting and you want to dive even further into the joyous, infinitely creative, and replayable world of a Magic the Gathering Cube. Without further ado, let's jump right in. What is a Cube? Cube is a custom Magic the Gathering limited format where players draft and play with a curated list of individual cards. The goal of a cube is to design your own optimized draft environment, where every card in the cube is a card you'd be happy to put in your deck. No chaff, no jank, no duds. Uh, unless, of course, you want to make a jank cube or a chaff cube, but we'll get to that. In other words, when you make a cube, it's like you get to design your very own Magic the Gathering set, except instead of creating brand new cards, you're building the set out of a few hundred cards that you've chosen from among every card that has ever been made for Magic the Gathering. So if you were going to design your very own Magic set to be drafted, using only reprints, which cards from throughout Magic's history would you want to include? The cube is your oyster. Drafting a cube. Cubes are drafted the same way as an ordinary draft, except instead of opening three sealed packs of cards, players randomly create their own set of three packs using the cards of the cube from which to draft. From there, the draft, deck building, and gameplay proceeds just as it would for a typical draft. Pick a card from your pack, then pass your pack to the next player. Repeat this process until there are no packs left to draft. Generally speaking, cube card pools are singleton. Packs are made up of 15 cards, and decks are 40 card minimums. Again, the point of a cube is to draft it the way you would draft a booster box of Magic the Gathering, only the booster packs are comprised of cards from the cube and you got to design the cube. That being said, as Cube is an unsanctioned, casual format, there really are no actual hard and fast rules on how to build or draft a cube, only this set of general guidelines that most cubers follow. The actual rules for your cube are entirely up to you, or I suppose you and your playgroup. Want to double up on fetch lands in your cube to make mana bases better and boost landfall synergies? Go for it. Want to draft four packs of 12 cards instead of three packs of 15 cards in order to give players more first picks? Sure, why not? Do you want to make your opponents have to draft even their basic lands? Have at it, you monster. One of the cubes in my personal collection is an Innistrad set cube that is not singleton as it looks to recreate an actual booster pack experience of drafting original Innistrad, a favorite set of mine. If you'd like to see how that kind of cube works, it is linked in this video's description. Designing your own cube. Building a new cube from scratch can be a daunting process, but take it one step at a time. The first thing you'll need to decide is the size of your cube. There are three primary sizes for cube. Small cubes with 360 cards, medium cubes with 540 cards, and large cubes with 720 cards. Small cubes can be drafted by anywhere from four to eight players. In an eight player draft, every card in the cube will be opened. 
as eight players times three packs of 15 cards equals 360. This is great for creating cubes that are highly reliant on synergy, such as those that want to support Storm, since players will have reliable access to all the different pieces that they need for whichever archetype they draft. In a larger cube, for example, someone may get punished for trying to draft Storm, only to find that a key payoff card didn't get opened, which will lead to a bad experience both for that drafter and all of their opponents who play against someone with a non-functional deck. 360 card cubes are also great if you don't plan to cube often, so you want players to get to play with every card in the cube every time you draft. Medium cubes of 540 cards tend to be the most common cube size. These can support drafts of up to 12 players, or more realistically, eight players who will open two thirds of the cards in the cube pool each draft. These cubes are ideal if you draft more frequently and want more variety in gameplay and decks from draft to draft. Most Magic Online cubes, such as the hugely popular Vintage Cube, are 540 card cubes. Large cubes are designed to support upwards of 16 players, or two pods of eight. Decks that require intercard synergy are harder to pull off in large cubes, as any given pot of eight will only open half of the cards in the pool. But for low synergy environments and playgroups that can reliably pull together 16 players for a draft night, large cubes are perfect. You can also build a 540 card cube that has a 180 card expansion for when you're having a larger draft night. Once you've chosen a size for your cube, the next step is to decide what you want your cube to be. Do you want to design your cube around a specific theme, or do you want it to just be made up of all the most powerful cards in Magic's history? Giving your cube some kind of identity gives you a direction as to what kinds of cards to include, and gives new drafters of your cube a sense of what kinds of cards they're likely to see as packs get passed around the table. Themes can be anything from a plane cube that includes only cards from a single magic plane, like an all Innistrad or all Ravnica cube, which is of course different from my original Innistrad set cube, which looks to recreate the draft environment of, well, original Innistrad. Cube themes can also be a format, such as a modern cube or a popper cube, and thus only have cards legal in the chosen format. Cubes can even be built around your favorite mechanic, such as a landfall cube. Maybe you love artifacts, so you want to build a cube where all five colors interact with artifacts in some way. Or maybe you really love the color black, and you want to build a mono black cube showcasing all the sweet forms a black deck can take. One of the best experiences I've ever had was drafting my friend's mono blue cube, where despite 100% of the cards in that cube being blue cards, a wide variety of archetypes from aggro to, well, control, to half a dozen other styles are included. There are no wrong answers, but having some answer will make both the process of building the cube and playing with your cube a lot more accessible. If this is your first time building a cube and you don't already have an idea of where you'd like to start, I recommend beginning with something simple and affordable, such as a popper cube or a peasant cube. Popper cubes and peasant cubes are a ton of fun to play with and feature many of the most iconic cards in Magic, such as Lightning Bolt, Land War Elves, and Counterspell. Gameplay is rich, interactive, and well-balanced. And most importantly, an entire 450-card cube can be purchased for as little as $100 if you want to build a Popper Cube, or about $400 if you wish to build a Peasant Cube. In this video's description, I've linked to the two most well-tested Popper and Peasant Cubes that you can purchase for yourself. I think either one of these cubes is a great starting point, and even if you have aspirations to build a much more expensive cube in the future, having one of these in your cube collection is always great to pull out. Card selection. Once you've selected your theme and decided on the size of your cube, it's time to start choosing cards to make up your cube list. Most of the time, you're going to want to have roughly the same number of cards from each color, a selection of artifacts, and an equal distribution of non-basic lands in each of the 10 two-color combinations. You'll also likely want some number of non-basic utility lands that contribute to the theme you selected for your cube. The first wave of inclusions will likely be the 
easiest. All your favorite cards that meet your cube specifications tend to be at the forefront of your mind. If you get stuck, the internet is full of resources that can help you out. A custom Scryfall search sorted by mana value can give you lots of ideas for cards you might not have considered yet. Say you're building a Super Friends cube, you monster, with lots of Planeswalker synergies. There are several relevant searches for you. Searching for cards with the Planeswalker card type is an obvious first step, but you can also search for cards that have Planeswalker in the Oracle text, or cards that reference adding or removing counters from permanents. Vampire Hexmage, for instance, would be a banger of a removal spell in a Super Friends cube that you might not have included in your first pass of card choices. You can also look up cubes that other players have designed which have similar themes and take inspiration there. Don't be afraid to copy another designer's work on this. You can always personalize your cube after playing with it, but the most important thing is finishing your first draft of the cube. One of the best parts of cube is sharing them with others. A friend group where one member has a cube is a friend group where everyone has a cube. You can even go in on a cube together, pooling your current collection and splitting the remaining cost and ownership across multiple friends. Improving and maintaining your cube. Once you've built your cube, there's plenty more cube design fun to be had. The beauty of owning a cube is there's endless room for tweaking, improving, and keeping your cube up to date with the many, many new set releases. An intermediate cube will have more complexity to it than just a pool of a few hundred independently strong cards. Adding intentional synergy and developing archetypes for each color pair will allow the decks your players draft to become more than the sum of their parts. This will lead to more engaging and replayable gameplay, which in turn will lead to more fun. Spend some time thinking about what you want each of the 10 color pairs in your cube to do. Maybe the Azurius decks are flicker decks that combine creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects like Muldrifter and Thraben Inspector, with blink effects like Ephemerate and Ghostly Flicker. Maybe Gruul has lots of land destruction, while Simic has mana ramp and big payoff cards to spend that mana on. Putting powerful signpost cards in your cube can point players in the right direction. Seeing Ephemerate in an opening pack is a great sign that blinking creatures is something your cube supports. The most fun cubes to draft are those that have some overlap between archetypes. For instance, if the Orzhov deck in your cube is a re animator deck, and the Rakdos deck is a madness deck, black discard outlets are going to be desirable cards in both archetypes. This means that the cards in your cube are playing double duty, which makes your cube a more intricate and rewarding draft experience. Another thing to keep in mind as you tune your cube list is the number of cards you have at each mana value. Generally speaking, you want more cheap cards and fewer expensive cards, as your expensive cards will face more competition with one another for slots and decks. The two mana value slot should be the most populous slot for most of your cards, followed by one and three mana value. The more cheap cards your drafters have access to, the more fun gameplay will be, as players will more reliably have high impact plays on the earliest turns of the game. So when constructing your cube, consider how most players are only going to want to put one or two six mana value white spells in their deck, rather than four or five of them. Obviously, the major exception to this would be green, assuming the green decks that you will build from your cube are interested in mana ramp. These decks will more reliably get to six, seven, or even more mana, so we'll want to have a greater selection of top-end cards to ramp into. As you draft your cube more and more, pay attention to how drafts and games play out. If a certain card is underperforming or always tends to be the last card remaining in a pack, that's a sign that you should consider cutting that card from your cube and replacing it with something higher impact. Remember, the goal of a cube is to build a draft environment with no duds. Ideally, every single card in your cube should conceivably contribute to one of the archetypes you've chosen to support. When replacing cards in your cube, make sure you don't lose sight of that mana curve. Try to replace duds with other cards of similar mana value. By the same token, when a sweet new card comes out that's perfect for one of the archetypes in your cube, you'll want to replace a card of a similar mana value in order to find the room. Commander and other kinds of cubes. As Cube has grown more and more popular over the years, more and more cubes have been designed and posted to the vast reaches of the internet. There are a ton of variations on Cube that highlight different aspects of the wonderful, complex game of Magic the Gathering. 
Commander cubes are a fun way to fuse Limited and Commander. These cubes are inspired by the innovative Commander Legends draft format and often have some unique rules. One such example is a public cube on Cube Cobra called Tom's Commander Cube, designed by the distinguished user Dank Train Tom. Tom's cube contains a whopping 1,032 card pool that can support up to 16 drafters who then break off into pots of four. When drafting Tom's cube, each player begins with four cards in their card pool. Command Tower, Soul Ring, Commander Sphere, and Prismatic Piper. In Dank Train Tom's own words, the Commander cube wouldn't feel like Commander if everyone didn't have a Soul Ring. Ha ha ha! That is indeed a dank train that you ride, Tom. Another cube variant, which I've already mentioned, is the set cube, which is a cube designed to recreate the feeling of a beloved limited environment like Innistrad, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, or even Time Spiral Remastered. As with any cube, there are no set-in-stone rules for set cubes. But generally, set cube designers will include four of each common from the set, two of each uncommon, and one of each of the rares and mythics. By building Building a set cube, you can draft your favorite limited set anytime you want without having to shell out the cost of a booster box. Some cubes have special rule variants that are designed to make the cube more fun. For example, my former tutor and friend of the channel, Carmen Klomperens, Proliferate Cube is built around the Proliferate mechanic. Virtually every card in her cube, regardless of color, has something to do with adding or subtracting counters of various kinds from players or permanents. The cube is high on synergy, so to facilitate players' ability to assemble these synergies, each player begins the draft with a Cogwork Librarian in their pool that they may use at any point throughout the draft. Once used, these librarians become draftable by other players to be used again at a later point in the draft. One more cube variant that's perfect for players who don't have reliable access to an eight-player pod is a variant known as the Tubert. Designed by Ryan Overturf, these cubes contain just 180 cards and are designed to be drafted by either two or four players. To pull off a two-player draft without losing the feeling of drafting, Ryan has designed an elegant and innovative solution involving involving each player starting with eight packs of seven cards each. These packs are drafted using a mix of hidden and face-up information to mitigate the degree to which each player can deduce what their opponent is drafting based on the cards that disappeared when a pack is passed back to them. For more information on Tuberts, I highly recommend checking out Ryan Overturf's inaugural article on the format, linked of course in this video's description. Cube Resources the number one website for building and maintaining a cube is Cube Cobra. Cube Cobra makes the process of adding and subtracting cards from your cube list simple. An elegant visual layout separates cards by color, including a section for colorless cards, multicolor cards, and lands. Within each color column, cards are separated by card type, and again by mana value within each type. This visual layout makes balancing your colors and mana curve a breeze. Cube Cobra also has a feature for getting practice drafts in with your cube. You can simulate a draft against bots to get a sense for what kinds of decks are possible. There's also an analysis section that can tell you if a card in your list underperforms for most players in most cubes, or is otherwise an unpopular inclusion for one reason or another. Cube Cobra is a great way to search for other people's cubes to get ideas, or to build their cubes for yourself. There are even cube-related podcasts, articles, and videos you can find on the site to learn more about what other members of the Magic community think about the format. If you would like to add more expensive cards to your cube, such as say you want to build your own powered vintage cube, but you don't want to drop tens of thousands of dollars, there are some great proxy websites out there that can be used to create high quality proxies that can easily be drafted and played with alongside real cards. This means, for example, if you'd like to play with the powered vintage cube that we played with on Shuffle Up and Play, but don't have a spare ten to twenty thousand dollars lying around, then even you, too, can experience the fun of getting to play with these cards. If you'd like to watch us play with that powered vintage cube, I will link that video in the description. Another great resource for improving your cube knowledge are the articles written by Ryan Overturf for Star City Games. Ryan is a very smart player and Magic the Gathering writer, and these days the vast majority of his knowledge is funneled through the lens of cube, specifically. Lastly, there are a couple great ways to play cube outside of game nights with your friends. 
Magic Online almost always has a cube of some kind or another that you can draft at your leisure. Yes, Magic Online still exists. Side note, unlike some other ways to play Magic Online, it actually has a multiplayer option and commander. But I'm getting off track. Magic Arena also hosts a cube from time to time, which has gotten more and more powerful as more and more cards have been added to the client. There's also CubeCon. CubeCon is an annual sanctioned cube tournament held in Madison, Wisconsin, where you can draft tons of fun and innovative paper cubes, including the Devoid Cube built around colorless cards and the Aganjo Drift Cube designed around vehicles. The next CubeCon will be held in 2024, and many Magic the Gathering players consider it to be one of the best Magic events of the year. So if this video helps you really get into Cube, then I highly recommend checking out CubeCon in 2024. Now, while this video has been a comprehensive overview of Cube, be sure to check out Cube in action. We have a shuffle up and play where we draft a paper power vintage cube and keep your eyes peeled for another Cube shuffle up and play coming to you soon and eventually linked in this video's description. And it's vital to remember that playing a cube is still playing Magic the Gathering and brushing up on your Magic the Gathering gameplay strategy is vital to getting better at whatever format you play. We recently did a video that is our definitive guide to learning how to get better at mulligans. And if you have not seen that video and you're looking to improve your Magic the Gathering skills from cube to draft to standard to commander, you should check that video out now. Next time, it's the lost episode of Shuffle Up and Play, an episode we thought we could never air because it's got so many, many misplays. But we sat down with our judges and marked every misplay we could, and now it's time for you to watch along and see if you can catch them before we do. Are you ready to shuffle up and misplay? Glad we caught that. Yeah. It is a good combo, yeah. Why would you do that to me? Well, you're out of mana, though. Uh, how many? Does uh, so Celeste's so trigger when it's Oh, Urza. Essentially, if you weren't following what just happened, this is still in my How could you not be following what <laughs> yeah. was happening? This is the point where the Magic Online client crashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it blows up. Uh, 